The test of whether a story is a classic is actually quite simple. It simply needs time. Decades, centuries, millennia, thousands of stories sift into the abyss of time while others become immortal. Stories ranging from Gilgamesh, Hamlet, to The Lord of the Rings, and movies are no different. So I guess the real question isn't how a story becomes a classic, but rather why. Why a story can transcend time or culture. We're tonight's entertainment. Well, hello, beautiful. You look nervous. I've seen now what would have to become to stop men like him. The night is darkest just before the dawn. I promise you, the dawn is coming. And here we go. Now it's been a decade since Christopher Nolan released The Dark Knight, which is a film I believe is a classic for the same reason these other classic stories endure. They tell the truth. I'm Ben Davies, this is Pure Hollywood. Socrates, while on trial, facing death, famously said, an unexamined life is not worth living. And I believe the same is true for stories in film. Now this particular rebel story piqued my interest when I stumbled across an article highlighting Patton Oswalt's new theory on the Joker in the Dark Knight. Also listening to great thinkers of our time like Jordan Peterson, who on multiple occasions uses this movie to attempt to explain and articulate deep, deep ideas. You really saw that when he burned the pile of money. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, no, you don't understand. I want everything to be worse than it is. Everything. It's like, you don't want the money? Those guys weren't evil. They were just criminals. They're barely even on the path, right? Because they, you want your car. They want your car. They're, their means of achieving it differ. But they're in the value structure. And the Joker character is like, no, he's outside the value structure completely. It's no, you don't get it. I want to make an art of pain. All of these discussions coming 10 years after this movie was released. And this really is the key, not just people enjoying a fight scene or a great monologue, but rather continuing to discuss the story over time. Each conversation bringing a greater understanding and application. So why is that? Because the story is true, no matter where you are or who you are. This really is a testament to Christopher Nolan, who wrote and directed The Dark Knight. And though his movies have unbelievable iconic moments like the bank heist, the pencil trick, blowing up an actual hospital, or flipping the semi-truck in the street, and the famous Joker interrogation scenes. But those moments are not what make a movie last. It's Nolan's unprecedented characters telling truths that to any generation are profound. So let's look at the main players, Batman, the Joker, and Gotham. Gotham, which is us, a city of people just trying to live their lives the best they can. And this really is at the core of everything. Good fighting evil for love, Wonder Woman fighting Ares for mankind, God against Satan for humanity. Now, Batman is an extraordinary man, a prophet in a sense who chooses to give up everything, body, mind, and soul, to be a symbol for the people because, as he says, as a man he can be killed, but as a symbol he can be incorruptible. This is to save us. Now this is profound in and of itself. This isn't just making some iron suit. There is deep meaning, truth, and purpose in this, but a protagonist is only as good as the antagonist he's up against. Now the Joker is, and I would say without argument, the greatest character performance ever put to screen. Not because the Joker itself is great that any actor can step into. We've seen that happen and it failed. I can tell you meant that. Yeah. Ah. Ah. You're gonna be my friend. Now Heath Ledger was masterful. However, an artist must work in the world given to him. The greater the tools, the greater performance. It's a very delicate collaboration between actor and director. Story, complexities, dialogue, situations, all set up by Nolan to let Heath dance in chaos, which is really what the Joker represents. He is the chaos to Batman's order. And Nolan, by no mistake, speaks the most truth through this character. For example, nobody panics when things go according to the plan, even if the plan is horrifying. As you know, madness is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. When the chips are down, these civilized people will eat each other. See, I'm not a monster, I'm just ahead of the curve. The Joker's dialogue is satanic in its precision and true because it's things we've all heard or felt in our own minds. The best example being when the Joker lures a hardened and disciplined police officer by talking about how he used a knife to kill this police officer's friends. But as a whole, the Joker is saying these things about Gotham to us. A huge, thriving civilization riddled with the propensities of good, but also the capabilities of unimaginable horrors. This encapsulated perfectly by Commissioner Gordon and Harvey Dent, the two most noble men in the movie. However, one in particular is pushed 
tortured and tempted by the Joker. And overwhelmed by the seemingly inevitable victory, this evil chaos, as seen by the people of Gotham giving in to it. And when talking to Harvey, the Joker gives a line that is so perfect and the genesis of so many other evils. Introduce a little anarchy, upset the established order, and everything becomes chaos. I am an agent of chaos. Oh, and the thing about chaos? It's fair. Oh, and you know the thing about chaos? It's fair. No one is hurt because everyone is hurt equally. This is postmodernism at its finest. No one loses because we all lose in the end. But I want to go back to the idea, fear, and how this evil chaos comes to power in this booming society. Nolan masterfully creates a formidable enemy out of nothing. Because at its core, the Joker really isn't a man. Yes, he is, but no, he isn't. He has no real origin story to speak of, just cryptic stories that could be anyone's origin story. And that's the point. No one, as seen by other great films, understands the power of an idea. How it must be grown organically and believably. Which is why all of his characters and technologies and weapons are all practically imagined. The Joker really isn't a mob boss. That would require respect and organization. He's not a powerful member of the community because he is insane. However, Heath Ledger's Joker is by far the most powerful because we understand him. He makes sense and earns our acknowledgement of power. The Joker is just that. He's the idea. He is that push. He's that satanic influence that manipulates the people around him. The Joker is born by infecting the minds of the most desperate, using them, making them destroy each other for his own gain, and then goes to the mob bosses and uses their structures against them, seeding distrust, resentment, and power, and then into the minds of the everyday people with one instance, one thing that happened, one horrific instance of someone trying to do good, trying Trying to emulate the best of them who is killed. How could this thing happen if Batman is good? How is that fair? And if it could happen to him, it could happen to us. This fear, this idea grows in the minds of the more powerful people. Now judges, commissioners, politicians all fall into this madman's terror and he plays them like a marionette. Until finally the entire community would rather their savior, their dark knight, suffer and die because of the promises of an evil madman. Have you heard this story before? Abandoning principles and values that have saved us from unbelievable evil, only to go back to the evils from which we ran. And the cycle continues. I believe this movie will last for generation, inspire conversations, debate, and dialogues, and even revelations with each watch. And those special effects may outdate or set pieces become irrelevant. The meaning, the symbols, the archetypal characters, the statements will remain relevant for years to come. And this is true of the entire trilogy. Batman Begins is about a man who decides to live sacrificially as a hero. The Dark Knight is a warning against the evils and principalities of this world. The Dark Knight Rises is a vision into what happens when our heroes fade, our society becomes complacent. We give way and let that tyranny rise. It's movies like The Dark Knight that give me hope in a time where movies, particularly Oscar movies, will fade into the abyss of history as soon as you leave the theater. Directors simply telling the audience what to think and subject us to a visual representation of a begrudging Twitter rant. Instead of showing truths and letting the audience experience it. Give some of the movies that stand the test of time a rewatch and you'll see the same thing running through all of them. Truth. I'm Ben Davies, this is Pure Hollywood. In awesome news, like super awesome news, you can now download the Rebel Media app and take me with you and have access to the entire Rebel lineup.